saving time with Oracle Clips. In this clip video, we're going to use the kubectl command to configure the Kubernetes configuration file. First, let's look at the configuration in our default kubeconfig file with the command kubectl config view. Now let's list the cluster information in the file with the command kubectl config get clusters. We see a single cluster called Kubernetes. Now let's set a new cluster entry called kubectl-prod with the command kubectl config set-cluster kubectl-prod. We set the server address for the cluster entry with the dash dash server key and the address for the value and path to the certificate authority file with the dash dash certificate dash authority key. Let's set another new cluster entry called kubectl-stage. We set the server address but this time use the dash dash insecure dash skip dash tls dash verify key and value as true to disable the certificate checking. Running the command kubectl config get dash clusters again, we see the two new cluster names. And looking at the config view, we see both new cluster details. Running the command kubectl config set dash cluster, we specify the cluster name and use the dash dash server key and value to the local host address this replaces the cluster configuration server setting with this new one. Looking at the config view, we see the change to the cluster configuration. A user is a credential used to interact with the Kubernetes API. So let's set a new user called stage-admin with the command kubectl config set-credentials stage-admin and set the bearer token with the key dash dash token and the token value. Viewing the config again, we see the new configured user and token. We display users defined in the kubeconfig with the command kubectl config get users. Context allows us to quickly and easily switch between clusters and namespaces. Now let's set a new context entry called stage. Running the command kubectl config set dash context stage, referencing the cluster kubectl dash stage with the user stage dash admin. We list all the contexts from kubeconfig with the command kubectl config get dash contexts. We see our new context under the name column and under the current column we see an asterisk identifying the current context being used. We can also see the current context with the command kubectl config current dash context. Running the command kubectl config use dash context and adding a context name sets the current context to be used. Here we try to change to the context called kubectl dash stage. It fails because there is no context with that name. This time we change to use the context called stage. It successfully switches. We verify the current context and we change the context back to our initial cluster when we started with the context name of kubernetes-admin at kubernetes. Looking at the configuration, we can see the current context is also set there. To close out this video, let's look at deleting elements from the kubeconfig file. First, we delete a context with the command kubectl config delete-context, adding the context name stage. Next, we delete a user account with the command kubectl config delete dash user, adding the username stage dash admin. And finally, we delete a cluster with the command kubectl config delete dash cluster, adding the cluster name kubectl dash stage. So that's a quick look at using the kubectl command to configure the Kubernetes configuration file. You can see more clips here, and don't forget to subscribe to always get the latest.